What's up guys? So today we're going to be doing part two of creating a COVID-19 Twitter bot, which will respond to your COVID-19 questions. I want to give another shout out to trackcorona.live and those guys for letting me use their API. They have a really strong and robust API. So you'll see that I actually expand upon what I wrote in the last video, only including country information, including city information, country information, and travel information for different places. So huge shout out to them. This is gonna, gonna be a really interesting video because I think this whole concept of like human interaction and actually answering people's questions is just a super useful uh, thing to know and be able to do. So let's get to it. So again, for starters, head over to developer.twitter.com slash n slash apps. You'll see the app you made in the last video. Click details and now click keys and tokens and you'll see the keys and tokens that you'll need now for this video. So then I want you to go to credentials.py and create a credentials file. I'm gonna cover up the credentials that I've uh, made because I don't want people to like create tweets as me. So I'm going to uh, cover this up and then I'm going to import this into main and then I'll be right back. Sweet, so now I've imported API key, API secret, access token, access token secret, account ID and account name from credentials. So now I can uh, import the module Tweetify, which will allow me to make API calls to Twitter on Python. So if you don't already have that, make sure to go to your console and say pip install Tweetify. So I'm gonna import Tweetify. And then I also need to import a couple of other things so I can stream. So from Tweetify.streaming, import stream listener. I also need to say uh, from Tweetify, import stream. Additionally, when I'm listening to a stream, so I want to listen for a certain keyword or a hashtag, Twitter is going to give that to me in JSON because JSON is used by a lot of web languages. So I'm going to want to import JSON so that I can use JSON.loads on the JSON that I received so I can parse it. So now that I have all the imports, the first thing I'm going to need to do is set up an auth. So I'm just going to make a function set up auth. Whenever I call it, it's going to set up an auth using credentials that I've imported. So first I'm going to say auth equals tweetpy.oauth handler, pass in my API key and my API secret. And then I'm going to say auth.set access token and I'll pass in my access token and my access token secret. And then after that, I just need to call um, tweetpy.api passing in my auth as an argument. So then I have a working API and a working auth. So I'm just gonna pass back my off and my API because I might need one in one case, one in the other case. I'll just keep them both for now. So now I'm going to write a driver if name equals main. What I'm going to want to do here is create a uh, follow stream. So I'm going to make a function follow stream, def follow stream. The first thing I'm going to want to do is set up my off. So API off is equal to set up off. And then after that, <clears throat> I'm going to want to create a listener and I'm going to make some class standard out listener that will take an inst uh, that will just be like a class that will take an instance of stream and then follow certain tweets or certain keywords for tweets and then I want to make a stream equal to stream for my auth and my listener and now I want to make my stream follow something by saying stream.filter and I want to filter um, things that have my account name. So I want to filter anything that has COVID ask, which is my handle uh, in it, in the tweet. So let's look, does this look okay? So cool, now the only thing I need to implement to make this work would be this class standard out listener. And I want to take an instance of stream listener. And then the only thing I actually want to implement is on data which takes in self and data. And then essentially what I'm gonna to wanna to be doing is for now I'm just gonna print the data. But in the future, I'm going to wanna to be taking in the data, parsing through it, finding what I want, and then replying to the tweet. So let's just see if this works for starters. Python main.py. Cool, and it looks like it might be reading, but let's tweet something at myself at COVID ask, hello world. 
I just tweeted hello. So, so if the stream's working correctly, I should get. So I got a response in the console, which means that this is working correctly, which is awesome. Uh, let me try to get all this information. Oh my god, I'm gonna need to make my terminal bigger. Sweet, so that worked. So just to show you guys what this response looks like, now that I've gotten all of this, and maybe I can show you, see the text says, hello world, but we're gonna want a couple things. So we're gonna want the ID so we can tweet back at it. Um, we might, we're gonna want, a, uh, eventually we want the text, but for now I'm just gonna show you guys how to respond to the tweet. So I'm going to make some function def respond to tweet and it's going to take in the tweet that I want to make and then the tweet ID. So first thing I'm going to need to do is get the API and auth, uh, set up auth. Another way I could do this is create some class method and then just always uh, utilize the API and auth from the class method, but calling it's not going to hurt. And then I just want to say api.update update status. And then I want to put in my tweet. I want to put in who it's in reply to. In reply to status ID equal to tweet ID. And then one other argument, which is auto populate, populate reply metadata which should be equal to true. Auto. Okay, cool. So that looks good. So now what I want to be doing is I'm not going to actually be reading it right now, but eventually I will be. Um, and actually I do need to read it to get the tweet ID here. So this is where I'm going to say like clean data is equal to json.loads. So this is where I'm parsing this. json.loads data. And now because I see that my ID is at clean data at ID, I can say tweet ID is equal to clean data at ID. And then I can just pass this tweet ID in some tweet. So I'll make my response tweet. This is a response. And then call respond to tweet with tweet and tweet ID. So now I'm going to need to one kill the stream which actually is like takes a while, but then I'm just going to need to run it again. I can tweet at myself and then I should first get the data, print it, and then respond to it. Cool. So I'm running this now. Cool. It didn't throw an error. At least it looks like. So now COVID ask, will this respond? Will you respond? And then And this is a response, so it did respond. Okay, sweet, so that's awesome. So now, all the steps that we actually need to do is just parse this for the things we need. So um, the natural steps now would be that I want to, step one, parse, tweet, and decode what we need. Step to uh, get data we need from track corona dot live API. And then after we get the data, formulate. Step three is formulate tweet. And then step four, is call our respond to tweet method. So I'm going to write these up and then I'll be right back and I'll talk about them. Five minutes later. Sweet, so if you just look at the standard out listener, you can already see that this got really complicated fast. So I originally was saying I just implement the four steps in the on data part of the standard out listener, but I instead uh, implemented this respond to tweet function that went through steps one, two, three, and four for me. Uh, this post response would be step four post the response. So what I'm doing here is that 
I'm first decoding the words in the tweet. So I get the tweet text, which I pass into this respond to tweet function. And I actually implemented this in the last video, which uh, I'll just link. But I made this a lot more, uh, I guess robust would be the right term because the track corona.live API actually has data based on country, city, or travel data based on country. So in decode tweet, I am going to get the city or the country based on the context of the other words around it, which is a little complicated. If you guys want to talk more about like natural language processing in the future or something similar to that topic, just let me know in the comments down below. But essentially just know that I am getting uh, t I'm checking if there's a country, I'm checking if there's a city, and then I'm checking if uh, there's travel mentioned in the tweet. And then based off of what is mentioned in the tweet, I am uh, passing this into get COVID info. And then this get COVID info function, which I also wrote and then rewrote in this um, iteration of the script, um, I added in travel and city information. And the last time I wrote it, I only had country information but the track corona.live API has information for cities and travel. So I added those features. And then in the case that like some tweet is extremely random, there's a lot of error checking here because in the case that there's no country city or mentions of travel, then I'm just going to pass in an error message, which is we don't understand your tweet or your tweet doesn't meet any of our criteria or they don't ask about symptoms of coronavirus or health concerns. So I just would send back the error message. So I call the API and then I also implemented this in the last video, but this is just a, a request to their site and then I get all the information. And then after doing this, I uh, just create a tweet and then I create a tweet with the information, be it travel information, the amount of people who have confirmed cases, the amount of people who have recovered. I format it in a tweet, I add in hashtags and then I return this tweet. And then after doing this, I just pa I, I return this tweet back into my respond to tweet. And then if um, there's no like symptom test or safe uh, considerations, then I know that they only want to know about the country they're in, the city they're in, or travel information regarding one of those two things. And I just post my response. And then the post response function is exactly the same. So just to run this and show you guys how it works. Python main.py. Hope this works. Cool. And it looks like it does work. So let's put this side by side. So I guess the question I'm going to ask is like, hey, COVID ask, what is going on in New York City? Hey, at COVID ask, what is the situation in New York City? So hopefully it gets streamed and then I get a response. So, oh, it sees that there's a tweet and it even tells me the, the actual URL and this gets logged. But in my case, I can just refresh and then I'll see that New York City, County, New York, there are 145,855 confirmed cases, zero people have recovered and there's 16,388 deaths, and this was updated 27 minutes ago. And then I hashtag a couple of things. So cool, I hope that made sense. I know I ran through that code very quickly, so I'm going to put the link on my GitHub, but if you guys have any questions about it, just let me know. I hope you guys liked that two-part series. If you want me to do more two-part series similar to that, let me know. If you want me to do anything different, just put it in the comments down below, uh, and please subscribe and become a patron on my Patreon. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good one.